Alrighty then, where were we? Let me just volume the. Oh, not here. Options, ending list. Okay, we're done with chapter one. Let's go for extra ending chapter two. To Martuba. It was a few days before Ayumi would be released from the hospital. The setting was a dark palatial chamber. Truly palatial at that, with various paintings and tapestries lining the walls in Arnit. Vividly huge candelabras dotting the room. Dotting, dotting the room. Along with a variety of human and animal shaped objects placed here and there. In short, these were surroundings rife with a sinister and supernatural mystique. Uh, Such was the nature of Martuba's tomb, the secret organization of black magic practitioners to which I belonged. And into these solemn yet stern environs echoed a low, deep female voice. We have determined the whereabouts of our holiest objects, the grimoire plundered from our hands by those detestable Yagora. There was a slow, heavy cadence to her voice and a degree of archaism to her speech that perfectly conveyed both authority and experience. This was not somewhat to be questioned. Surrounding me in this sacred space were numerous shadowy figures, each wearing a black robe. We looked an awful lot like pop culture perception of devil worshippers. Truly, a long last. They have those Agora. The book is shadows. The weight of this juice was evident by the sudden emotional reactions of those around me. I too was wearing the black robe though the bits of pale skin peeking through would have made it easy to pick me out of the lineup. Lo, the radius of our queen hath reached my eyes from the depths of the schoolhouse manifested by the nirvana. Oh ho, just as predicted, our founder's wisdom rings true. But was that girl of use? There was a palpable sense of excitement throughout the chamber. Margari, Margari, come. Okay. I step forward. Mistress Margari of the second degree, we place in thee our trust on thy mission. Thanks so much. The very fate of this, our sacred order of Martuba's tomb, doth depend solely upon the Book of Shadows. Thus must thou use it thy power to retrieve it forthwith. Huh? By myself? Thou beest the sole master available at this juncture. Beest? Huh? She with the second right of succession, Azusa Takai, be also present within the Nirvana, though I to retrieve the book and the girl. Who the fuck is Azusa Takai? Oh wait, Azusa, uh, the girl from St. Cruz, the one that died. The one that calls Kishinu a Sir Knight, right. The f uh, fine. I had no qualms about talking back to our high and mighty leader, but some fights you just can't win. There was no getting out of this one, so I figured I'd just suck it up. We shall keep thee abreast of all pertinent information. Do not falter if thou shouldst fail. Know that thy right of succession shall be revoked. Okay. I found myself in the local park that night. From a time to juggle gym, I contemplated my situation. Why does everything have to suck so much? With my position as successor on the line, I guess I don't really have any choice but to go. But goddamn, heavenly host, why? And to have to go after that fucker Azusa on top of everything else? Where the hell does she get off? I laid myself back onto the sealed bars of the jungle gym and gazed up at the sky. The stars were particularly bright that night. Really now. Why the fuck did you have to die on me now, Sayonuki? Now, big scum shithead. Could almost make out now's Rai smile in the sky above, as if she'd somehow become a constellation after her passing. What? I was supposed to be the one to kill you. I fell alone, unchallenged. And then even the now constellation died on me, slashed through by the tail of a shooting star in the dark of night. Why'd you have to leave me? Aren't I good enough for you? Unfortunately, I was alone no longer. A voice rang out from below me. It was Misuto. Yeah. Hey, long time no see. When I turned to look, I saw him standing at the bottom of the jungle gym, waving. I said nothing in response, instead brandishing my scythe and leaping from my perch in one swift motion, hoping to catch him off guard and lop off his damned head. He was obviously ready for me, however, casually stopping my advance with a 500 yen umbrella without once displaying the slightest surprise or strain on his face. <laughs> 
if I had to give him credit for one thing, it would be keeping cool under pressure. My strength is that insubstantial. He had to have been struggling to hold me back, but it didn't show. You're also after the Book of Shadows, aren't you, Miss Fourth in the Line? So how about we work together till one of us gets it? The sight of the plastic umbrella's frames scraped against one another with an ear-splitting shing. I had every intention of killing him right then and there, and I made no effort to hide it. Misuro, meanwhile, was just smiling back at me. Though he had a look in his eyes as well, the slightly bellied belied his outwardly nonchalant uh, nonchalant regard for this battle. His black pupils shone red in the dim light. Finally, we each pushed hard enough that our weapons clashed and deflected one another, putting some slight distance between us. Yeah. We'll save this fun for later, persistent Yagora scum. With a flick of the wrist, I shrank my scythe back into portable form and sheathed it. I then crossed my arms and smiled. Yeah, there'll be plenty of time for a battle royale later. Guess I'll just have to wait till then, cause I sure would love to kill you too, Martuba. When this is all over, I'll be sure to watch you take your last breath. If we're going to work together though, we'll need to be on the same page. I believe what you're looking for is a fully intact Book of Shadows, correct? Your holy object with the Nirvana and the core all right back into it into form to the completed whole as it originally manifested uh huh you should have pointed his 500 yen umbrella at me that nirvana was awakened a long time ago by yoshi of the shinozaki lineage which means the book can't be reformed by anyone but ayumi shinozaki the successor to that line <laughs> Mitsuto have derisively. So I plan on sending Ayumi to the Nirvana to Heavenly Host once more. I'll get her to pay a visit to Makina Shinazaki's apartment. Mitsuto had his arms crossed as well. This was about as reluctant a truce as they come. Is that so? You do realize that if she dies, there's no one left to replace her. Of course I know that, which is why I'll be supporting her from the shadows. As much of a royal pain in the ass as that is. Okay, you do that. I've got some plans of my own. This hardly counts as working together, you know. It's pretty much just a race to see who gets the book first. And that sure as hell ain't gonna be you, you park of freak. Say, says you shit, bitch. He turned to walk away, but not before chucking a knife in my general direction. He grazed my cheek before embedding itself in the bark of a tree behind me. Though I made absolutely no attempts to dodge it, nor did I allow my expression to change even marginally. Excellent. I smiled wildly, drunk on my own insane machinations. The pieces were all falling into place. Uh huh. That it? What in the fuck? I can't show this. Uh, Ancestor Virgil will be on bitch you. Much later. Lying on my back in the bathing area, I thoroughly sized up the Ever After stones I'd stolen. All the while, a maid was scrubbing me down to get rid of. Dead skin stones so I could keep on looking pure and lovely. Ouch. The maid just flashed me a smile and continued scrubbing. Book of Shadows aside, I wonder if I'll, yeah, I can maybe find now or Saika's body. That seems like it might be kind of full luck. The vehement scrubbing was making my body vibrate quite a bit, and between that and my monologuing, I wound up biting my tongue. Immediately, I shot to my feet. That's thin. Stop, you piece of shit. I bit my thumb. Not just yet. We still need to wash you down with hot water. He, I got so much off. You must feel like a new woman. Is my skin squeaky? It is. Prove it. As you wish. Sure enough, when the maid ran her fingers over my body, the resistance they found created a sound not unlike the... What? Not unlike that of a fresh, cleaning plate? Okay. Now, bad for a scrub. Okay, then. All is forgiven. That was unnecessary. God, fucking heavenly host. Fell back into my king-sized canopy bed, sprawling out as much as I possibly could. On the floor nearby was a suitcase my butler, Waldo, had prepared for me. Madame? Waldo was always so courteous and always kept an even tone of voice when addressing me. The preparations have been completed. I turned my head and looked down at the suitcase. Damn it all, God. Slowly peeled myself out of the bed to begin the arduous task of packing for my trip to Heavenly Host. Opened and ready for me, 
The suitcase contained a number of essentials that Baldo had prepacked on my behalf. This sucks. It's awful. I hate it. There was a canteen, some store-bought sweet buns, a black robe, some candles, matches, a knife, and a few other assorted survival items. This sucks. It's awful. I hate it. Madam, I've also prepared for you some cosmetic water and liquid foundation, along with milk lotion if it's needed. He had two large bottles in his hand. I hate it. Of course. Yeah, okay. Wait, that's it? Huh. Alright. I can't even save. You know, I went ahead and checked how long extra chapter 3 and 4 would take, and it looks like chapter 3 would take over an hour, chapter 4 would take an hour and a half. I'm like, no thanks. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna skip 3 and 4 for now, and just play extra chapter 5. Let's go. I hope it's short. Threading the needle. In the depths of the Martuba's tomb is Q. In a storage room stacked high with books to rival any libraries, I was hard at work researching my marks, squatting on the ground to read the books I'd spread out before me. The Book of Shadows originally belonged to Martuba's tomb, right? So where's all the info on its roots? Achoo, it's so dusty in here. I hit the shelf behind me with my back when I sneezed, and after a couple seconds had passed, a fairly heavy book fell from above, landing right on my spine. Ow, oh, damn it, what the hell? Put this shit away right next time, you fuckers. I observed the fallen tome, which has serendipitously opened to a photo that looked an awful lot like the very book I was seeking. Before I could read the associated passages, however, a member of the order appeared and gave me a stiff salute. Mistress Magri of the Second Degree, we have completed our analysis of the Ever After Stones. Their spiritual composition shows a nominal 83% accuracy to the originals. Okay, good work. Those are the stones I swear from Iconiwa, though, right? You assholes better not have replicated the damn things without my consent. We would never. Fine, then just remember, this is my prey. Anyone who gets in my way will be eliminated, Martuba or otherwise. Are we done now? Please. <laughs> no, really. Wow, that it. We are done. Nice. Alright, let's see. Uh, new chapter. We're done with chapter 5. How about chapter 6? Separation. What the? I remember I was leaning against a wall in a small basement room with indirect lightning, and you know I was sitting in a chair across the room from me, holding a coffee mug. A beautiful silver bracelet on her left wrist caught the light, sparkling majestically. Thank goodness the test results were negative, at least. What? I swear to you, Hinoe, I'll track down every member of the team that assaulted you and tear them to fucking ribbons. Those species of shit have no reason to live. They don't deserve to breathe the same air as us. All they do is mass produce little fuckers just like themselves. God damn it. This world just needs to die, and I'm gonna crush it myself with my own two hands. Misuro. You know, his tone of voice was calm and soothing. She was trying to bring me back from the rage that had consumed me. When I was younger, I used to think them much the same way. I couldn't do anything but suffer, and no one was ever there to help me. I felt like even my friends had betrayed me. I truly wish that outside of my family, everybody in the entire world would just drop dead. I was a sophomore in junior high at the time. I still think that way. And I did too for a long time, but then I grew up. And I realized that I met and become good friends with so many different people in just those few short years. And I was glad to have those people in this world. I was glad to know they were alive. So please know that you'll regret it if you end everything based on how you feel at one single moment in time. Your tale won't come to a happy end like a regular story should. Oh shut up, my ideology comes from all the crap I've had to live through. This is no junior high garage. I want to see those who terrorize the weak get what's coming to them from the people they hurt. There's no hesitation at all in your ideals, is there? I'm rather envious of that. You know I closed her eyes and smiled. She then drew her knees into her chest and wrapped her arms around them, contemplating something. Sniffle. You know eh? 
I don't think I can be with someone like you. Don't cry, Hinoe. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't apologize. Come on, it's okay. I'm so sorry. Hinoe buried her head in her hands and began to cry. You don't need to apologize. We separate that day due to irreconcilable differences in our personal philosophies. And that's around when I began walking toward what I felt was my destiny. The Purge. And yeah, I did it. I chose a highly populated area and killed a lot of people. And it didn't even bother me because they were all just pieces of human waste, polluting the world. Isn't that hypocrisy though? You want to protect the weak but then you're just killing people? Yeah, yeah. You're not even sure who those people are? My headless corpse now lay in the heavenly host nirvana. Sucks to be you, a silver bracelet dimly glinting upon his wrist. You don't tell me he's gonna be a revived or some shit. Wait, that's how it ends? I, I hear music. Uh huh, alright. Separation, it's a pun. But I'm pal. Okay. Uh huh. Oh, then. Wait, what, what was that chapter again? Shit. Ending quest. Watch you. Alright. Let's go end uh, chapter 7. Chapter 7. Satsuki's heart? Alright. I don't have any clear memories of my childhood. But I do remember my parents being kind. And? It was dust and the room was completely unlit. It was so dark inside that we could have been entertaining guests and I'd never have known it because I never have been able to see them. Lol. I felt alone but I knew I wasn't and I was determined to get my mom's attention. Mom, I'm hungry. As you and me shadow moved since the sun had started setting, my mom was probably still sitting at our small kitchen table, leaning her elbows on it and cradling her forehead. This was the third time I'd inform her of my desire to eat and finally this time I could hear her start to move at the sound of my voice. Though this was my home, it always just felt like an empty void to me. And that was more than just a feeling. I noticed my voice was echoing a lot more than it ever used to. All of our furniture was mysteriously disappearing, day in and day out. Yesterday was a toaster, the day before was a piano, the day before that was our chest of drawers. And today was Dad? Where had Dad gone, I wondered. Mom? Mom's shadow moved slightly, silhouette in a shade of... Black, only slightly different from the rest of the blackness around me. She extended her arm in my direction. Satsuki. I'm sorry, Satsuki. Her tone, like the house itself, was dark. Maybe it just sounded that way because of the general mood in the room. Hopefully, that's all it was, I thought. Mom, the lights won't turn on. Shit. She's poor. That's awful. Satsuki. I'm sorry, Satsuki. Suddenly, my field of vision shook violently and my surroundings began flitting by like shooting stars. Flashes of light were whizzing to and fro as the barely discernible ceiling pattern above me was phasing in and out of existence. The legs of the table I was sitting at began to melt away. I saw Mom's face for a moment and then there was a this strange march of frying pans flying through the air. Which was especially strange since we only owned one frying pan. My entire face began to swell and go into convulsions, and my ears were howling and ringing. I could barely hear anything anymore. The air is under my nose and ears were all wet and cold as well. Was that snot? Earwax? What was I feeling? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. See? Whenever this happened, Mom would always hang back and rest her head for a bit, but would then hug me with the kindest, warmest, most sickeningly sweet embrace. That's why I love them. I love frying pans. I love what they represent to me. I'm sorry, dear, but this is all I have. Mom gave me some potato chips. They weren't exactly my favorite brand, so their flavor was kind of iffy. But it's the thought that counts, right? There were cartons and cartons of potato chip bags all throughout our house, and they were all for me. I was the only one who really ate them. And whenever I did, Mom would always seem to be a little happier for some reason. So frying pans were my favorite objects and potato chips were my favorite food. Satsuki? Satsuki, in three days, you have a very important role to fulfill. A role? What's a role? It's something joyous. You're to be reborn through the incomparable wisdom of the Archbishop, 
You'll be one rank higher than ordinary humans. What? Uh huh. What the fuck? Okay, lady. Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. Come on. Come on, you can do this. Well. Sasuke, Sasuke, what's up? Oh, Mizuhara. This was Hare Mizuhara. I'd known her since grade school. I still wasn't sure how to react when someone called out to me, though, so I just stared at her blankly. Who the hell is that? What is it? Well, aren't you Miss Gloomy again today? Can't you at least give me a what's up every now and again? Whatever, Sasuke, this weekend we have to hit up land. We just can't keep talking about it and not go. I can't do weekends, I have meetings. For crying out. Why not leave all that religious crap to your parents? You at least want to go with me, don't you? I know that face, I know it well. I know how much you love those Maki pants that I bought you from there. I do want to go, but... Ignore your parents, girl, ditch them. Give him the heave-ho. <laughs> Mizuara was generally really funny. She had a certain sense of charming about her that made it hard for me not to get sucked in. I didn't usually laugh as a rule, but this girl could really bring it out of me. Honestly, wouldn't it be nice if people could pick and choose their parents? You could be so bright and cheery if you weren't always scooped up in Darksville. Plus, you got a good pair on you, so why not use those to bring all the boys to the yard? Be all like boingy boingy. Later that day, Mizuara got into a car accident. <laughs> Well, that took a quick uh, turn. On, uh, on her way from home to school, her jaw had shattered on impact, preventing her from ever smiling again. Since then, she hadn't come to school a single time. So that explains her uh, behavior, her attitude. You must be Satsuki. It's nice of you to come. You're such a good girl despite your young age. You show a firm grasp of reason and understand the nobility of self-sacrifice. You truly are a wonder. I was brought to this suspicious place through some magic that obviously leaned a bit on the dark side. I remember I was really cold here since I was wearing nothing but a thin black robe. Following her parents' orders without talking back at all, she must be a very good child indeed. This was the headquarters of the Martuba's tomb. I was in a room lined with terrifying looking devices and everyone around me was dressed in similar robes, listening intently, almost passionately, to their leader's voice. My mind was a blank slate. I had a slight smile on my face, but I didn't want to make eye contact, so I just focused all my attention on a random piece of floor. Hi. Yeah, Mistress Magri, our child truly is the most honest and obedient. As you can see, we'll do anything we can to be of use to the order, anything at all. Is that so? Then how about you pay for your fucking dues for a change? Wonder if you could even guess how many times you've defaulted. Yeah, Mistress. Satsuki, my pawn, do you accept this fate of your own volition? I gave an empty smile and turned my gaze lazily toward the corner of the ceremony room. What I saw there gave me a sudden chill, though I did my best not to show it. <laughs> Sticking out from a massive earthen, earthen wave, a pot was Haru's face, throwing bloody and with eyes rolled back into her skull. Ignore your parents, girl, ditch them. Oh, that's Haru. Shades of drool and blood alike had stained in her lifeless chin. She appeared very much as if she had literally just been thrown away. Like yesterday's garbage. Sasuke, my pawn, what's it to be? The pairs of those who accept this fate will be granted a powerful position within our holy order. The room fell silent, no doubt anxiously awaiting my response. I've been trying my hardest to swallow my emotions, but there are just some feelings of pressing can't suppress, and one of them made its way up from my heart and out of my mouth. I don't want to die, Mr. Smuggery. It was accompanied by a sudden flurry of tears and my parents immediately began to show signs of extreme panic on their faces. They looked at me as if I just committed the greatest affront known to man. They were afraid but also disgusted. Their stares were cold and accusatory. This is a transformation experiment, right? I don't want that. Alright. The simple affirmative statement was followed by one quick flick of the wrist and suddenly my parents were now missing the upper halves of their bodies. It required almost no effort. My parents each now lay in two pieces, making a squishy, slimy, awful sound as they died. Satsuki. That's just what I was hoping from you, Satsuki. Live on for your friend Mizuhara. You can live under me. I'll take you in as my pet. I'll even prepare replacement parents for you. What? Okay. 
I, now then, let the spiritual surgery begin. I am Satsuki Mizuhara. Oh. And I have just been born on this day. Huh. Okay, so what a twist. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. So now we're done with uh, almost all of them. Chapter 3 takes about an hour, which is enough. Chapter 4 takes about an hour and a half, which is way over my fucking schedule. So yeah, uh, we're almost done. Next chapters, meh, they're okay. Whatever. No, nothing much to say. Just some things that aren't wins. Oh, but he knows his chapter with Misuto. So, uh, she was assaulted just recently, and Misuto's like, Oh my god, I have to kill those bastards that did that to you. I'm gonna kill everybody in the world because of what you experienced. Huh. Yeah, okay. <laughs>